Thank you.
Good morning. Um, let me just make sure. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, family, Gassi, Shani, uh, uh, Matthew, all the family. Um, Ons verwelkom jullie in die besonder by hierdie geleentheid. Um, due to some of our families, we will also... Um, um, have the service in bilingual, certain parts in English and others in Afrikaans due to uh, different reasons. This is a um, very difficult position for every one of us, the shock. Uh, but this service um, is to celebrate the great life of Sean Bartlett. Our hearts reach out to Gassi, Shani and Matthew and all their family in South Africa and abroad who lost a loving husband, caring father and a great friend. Ons harte gaan uit na allemaal wat oor Sean se pad gekruis het. Allemaal weet dat Sean van enige probleem een rustige oplossing voorgestel het. Sean's raad was altyd net te oproepver and always beskikbaar. The choice of this venue in the nature and green environment is to express the love and the nature of Sean and his family and to celebrate in this manner. Those who have been abroad with Sean to a wrestling tournament or training camp will agree that you will return back with a dear friend for life. In his short life, he was a great father a trustworthy worker and leader and a lover of the sport of wrestling in which his son guy engaged. Eventually, his entire family enriched the amateur wrestling sport of South Africa. When you follow the messages on social media, you will find great appreciation, respect, heartly celebration of his life. We both believed in the upgrading of the young wrestlers. He did not only send his 12-year-old son on the wrestling tours to Europe, he joined as well. And that was part of my uh, great uh, journey with, with Sean. I would like to share the scripture with you from the book of Psalms and share some thoughts evolving from this passage which might provide us with some thoughts to ponder on in this dark period when losing a loved one. Our scripture reading from uh, Psalm 139, the six verses. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Ons nieuwe Afrikaanse vertaling. Jere, u onderzoek my en u ken my. U is die een wat my sit en my opstaan ken. U verstaan van ver af wat ek in gedagte het. My omswervinge en waar ek rus, u het afgemeet. Al my paie is aan u bekend. Ja, daar is nog nie een woord op my tong nie. Kijk dan ken u jyre dit volledig. Van achter en van voor omsluit u my. U plaas u handpalms om my. Om dit te verstaan is te, gro is te groot wonder vir my. Dit is te hoog. Ek kan dit nie begryp nie. The author of this psalm not only describes the vulnerability of the humankind on earth, but also the faith that we are looking for in several ways. We are cared for without understanding the depth of the Lord to each and everyone. It also describes the comfort and the magnitude 
of caring for each individual. However, it often takes a lot to understand the depth of this. We often do not capture and understand the magnitude of the blessings of each and every one. Elke keer wanneer mens die eerste zes vers van te Psalm 139 lees, besef mens, daar is wel iemand wat my positie verstaan, en my broosheid my hand bevat, en my in donker tye wil lei. Met jou ons wegneem op een relatief jong leven, onverwacht, begin een mens nie oor die leven denk. Die leven is kort, maar word telkens kort geknip op die tyd, wat die mense nie begrijp nie. The question remains, how should we live to make sense of our environment? The author of Psalm uh, 139 gives us some indication in which direction, uh, which direction he is thinking. Die vraag bly steeds bestaan, hoe behoort die mense te leven om sin te maak van dit wat om jou aangaan? Die dichter van Psalm 139 gee ons een aanleiding in wat de richting hy gedink het. Een mens hou daarvan om beheer te kry oor, le- oor ons leven. Maar hoe makkelijk of hoe moeilijk is dit? Kan een mens ooit beheer kry oor alles? Is dit noodzakelijk dat een mens he- beheer het oor alles? Wat er ons zekerheid het mens in die leven? Ons wil zekerheid bekom. We are all taught from early days to take control of our life. From the sports arenas to the school or work. How does one capture the total control of yours or your family's life or your other people's life in a balanced way. These are questions we struggle for the rest of our life to answer in appropriate manner. Wanneer mens besalm 39 lees, kom een mens nie by die totale sekerheid uit nie, maar by die totale afhankelijkheid in die Heere, wat er mens kan bevestig dat hy of sy in beheer van alles is, van die lewe of van jouself. The dependence of Psalm 139 indicates a total faith in every step. Our lives are not in our own hands, but we can only keep our life fit and healthy. We only live our lives with all the blessings from the Lord. We cannot understand how certain people can live a long life while several children not even reach adulthood. The afhankelijkheid van Psalm 39, die op die volle vertrouwe in elke tree. Ons levens is nie aan ons eie hande nie, maar ons kan wel ons leven gezond en fiks hou. Ons kan ons leven leef met al die seninge van die heren. Ons verstaan nie hoe die, die mense, uh, 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 hoe sekere mense lang leef nie. The last year, we were all exposed to a new normal life uh, of which no one expected. The COVID pandemic brought new rules to the surface. Structures changed. Everyone, everyone had to adapt and doing things differently. We learned new habits. Nothing, not everything was negative. New opportunities, opportunities arose from the horizon. The afgelopen jaar is ons allemaal blootgestel aan die nieuwe normaal van leven, waarvan niemand geweet of we plan het nie. Die COVID pandemie het nieuwe materials ingebring en structure verander. Allemaal het aangepas en dinge niet begin doen. Ons het nieuwe gewoontes aangeleer en alles was nie negatief of slecht nie. Nieuwe geleentheer het na vore gekom. My science teacher at school told us in class, he was a medical student halfway in his third year at the university when the second world war started in the northern hemisphere. He was called up for military service. But after five years, when the war discontinued, and he returned, he could not continue with his medical studies. He then became a science teacher. His options changed, not necessary for the better or for worse. He had to adapt. Sean Bartlett's life had to halt, what to halt what to halt is, all what wat na om geleef het. Dit laat die mens besef, hoe behoort ons uitkijk op die huidige leven en die toekomst herdink. Ons leef nog allemaal soms asof ons vir ewe gaan lewe. The relatively short life of Sean reminds us to live the life we always wanted to live. 
and not wait for the old age. I have also lost at least six of my schoolmates during the last year. I constantly ask myself, why them and not me? Of course, there are many reasons and clarifications. Every person has a journey of its own, a journey to respect. Anything can happen anytime and any, anyone should be prepared. Have you made peace with everything and everyone around you? This might often be a challenge on its own. We all know that Sean Bartlett loved his wife, his children and his family. But he also loved sports and therefore his commitment to the sport of wrestling and people around the sport will stay with us forever. Let, let us pray to the Lord in this regard. Come on, mark us with You must have Father. Ons kom na u toe in totale af afhankelijkheid. Ons is allemaal kwetsbaar. Ons is allemaal geskok dier dat u een besondere persoon uit een besondere familie en een besondere stoeiegemeenskap en een werksmeerstap geneem het. Je als vader ons wil in die besonder hierdie familie in die optra dat u hulle ook elke dag sal sien en ook elke dag die vrede sal gee dat u die pad met hulle elke dag sal loop. Lord, we pray that if each and every one here today will rethink the content of Psalm 39. We are vulnerable and we are dependent on you for each and everything, every day. You must have Father, ons vraag dat u in die besonder ook met elkeen van ons wat vandag hier is, ook in die besonder sal sien, elkeen sy familie, elkeen wat ver gekom het. Ons vraag dat u versjoen in sy familie en sy vriende en sy gemeenskap met hulle ook pad sal loop wat u alleen met hulle kan loop. Ons vraag dit in Jesus Christus naam. Amen. Uh, ons, we ask now um, for the eulogy of Christine Randall. Is Christine Randall here? Yeah? So I speak to it. I never had, never expected to say a final goodbye to Sean. Always thought I'd be the one he'd be wedding, um, bidding farewell to. In fact, just over two years ago, when I had quite a traumatic cancer diagnosis, Sean said, I'm not ready to say something at your funeral, Mrs. R. <laughs> when I pushed him, he said, well, I would tell everyone, never mess with Mrs. Randall. He used a more choice word than that, but I'll leave it there. <laughs> he had seen my patience with certain people wear very thin, and he knew it was usually game over for the person involved. The thing is, he never asked me what I would say if he went before me. It never crossed our minds that that might happen. And so here I stand, shocked, heartbroken, and at a loss for words. From when I met Sean, I really liked him. He was hardworking, had a wicked sense of humor, got on well with all he met him, and was quietly ambitious. He soldiered away quietly until it was time for him to take over the reins from Hugh. We worked exceptionally well together, and whether it was dealing with employees' issues, trade unions, disciplinary matters, or selecting new staff, we just seemed to gel. A love of the bush and deep, deep love of our families cemented our friendship. 
what sticks out for me most is how absolutely dedicated he was to his family. The world revolved around Gussie, Shani, and Matt for him. If Gussie was promoted, he would share the news widely and with such immense pride. With every academic achievement of Shani's and Matt's, we'd hear about it. He would have been so unbelievably proud if he'd been with you yesterday. Shani was bursting with pride that you were graduating. All Matt's wrestling achievements were shared with anyone who was prepared to listen. The three of you absolutely rocked his world. He was so proud of you all. He never missed a Randall birthday. <laughs> Crazy. I'd get messages like, can't believe Stevie's 27 today. Our boy boys grew up around Sean and are just as devastated as the rest of us that he's no longer with us. Stevie's here today and I know that Nick would have loved to have been here too. When William announced his engagement to Jen, he said, our little boy is all grown up. I feel like a proud father. <laughs> a short while ago, not a couple of weeks ago, when Sean and, Sean and Gus were in the Kruger National Park and he was having a particularly difficult time, he sent me a WhatsApp saying, Chris, you need to get Hugh here before he kills someone. <laughs> Last year, when COVID had really hit, Sean sent a message saying, Get Hugh to rest. His mind is going at top speed again. Sean never stopped caring. While I know some people, some employees, I can't imagine many, may not have liked Sean, he was concerned about absolutely everyone. He let me know who'd been promoted, who'd had an accident, who was in hospital and who had passed away. It always broke his heart when someone who had worked at MDS passed away. Sean, I'm going to miss the morning Mrs. Randall, our chats over coffee, our sharing of experiences and photographs, but I will miss the most is the laughter. I'm sure that when you get to those pearly gates or got to them, Thomas was there to welcome you with Maul or Sean in that gruff voice of his. Sean, rest in peace, gentle giant, and soar with the eagles. Thank you, Christine. We uh, ask for Dylan Ryan. Huh? Oh, Dylan Ryan. Oh, I I don't think there's enough words that would be able to eulogize Sean properly. I, I, I said I was going to try not to do this because the bond that Sean and I shared over the years was, was quite unique. We had a passion for so many similar things. Our biggest passion was the business, growing the business and making sure that everything runs smoothly. We have over the last six years been very successful in doing that. And in looking at this picture to the left right here is, is exactly how I want to explain the Sean I knew to you guys. <laughs> Sean, Mrs. Randall said it best, had a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> and th this morning, when I was thinking about him, but you know what? What would I have said to him? And all sorts of things are going through my mind. And I got this image in my head of Sean up there with the big guy, explaining to him what the significance was with having a little bit of Tabasco on your <laughs> pineapple when you had a tequila. <laughs> Another question that Sean probably would have asked was, why would a duck-billed platypus be considered <laughs> a mammal? <laughs> and 
the reason I'm saying this is this because Sean was not only a loving, caring person, he was a fun, jovial person. Sometimes his timing was a little bit off on his comments. <laughs> and uh, the management team, our teams across the country that are streaming now and sitting there will know exactly what I'm talking about when, when things went wrong and it was escalated to Sean and Sean's reply would just be, but did you die? <laughs> <laughs> and those are the type of things that we are going to remember him for. This dynamic leader, our commander in chief who's no more, but whose legacy will continue throughout the business. My ask for the MDS family, the management team, Rudy, Dale, Temba, Matthew, now more than ever, Marnu, you as well, William, is where we got to band together, pick up Sean's legacy and make sure that that continues. Sean had a vision for this business. <laughs> and I, I plead with you guys and everybody across the country, Let's continue doing that for sure. And if all else fails and we're going to falter without his mega brain, without his vision, there's just four letters I want us all to remember. And it's W, W, S, D. What would Sean do? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this uh, celebration. We we call on Nico Kutsia. Good morning, friends. My name is Nico Kutsia, and I am here to add to the two speakers about how valuable a man and exceptional man Sean was. So in 2018 het onze vriend verloren bij een jonge vriend in Stoei. En een van die goed wat ik op die dag geleerd heb, is dat soms wordt die rige leentjere oorweldig met hartseer en die diep pijn binnen jou hart. Maar ons vergeet allemaal dat het iets of iemand is wat die met ons gedeel het. En, en ons het nodig om dit te vier, om daar oor gelukkig te wees en so bykie daar oor te lach en die goed te onthou van wat so persoon met ons gedeel het, en dis wat ek beplan om met julle te doen. So julle die begin toe ek Sean ontmoet het, maak ek enig die fout om vir hom te sê, Sean, weet jy, my opa is een skot, een murg in been een skot, en ek, ek moes het nooit gesê het, nie, want van die dag af is het nooit weer die selfs nie, het my, hy het so lang rikkie gedink toe, toe kom hy met een baie berekende antwoord, en hy sê vir my boerkie, ek het gedink jy het die Engelse streek in jou, en nou like ek jou nog meer, en die woorde steek nog altyd in my kop vast, en weet jylle Sean, wat merkwaardig was van hom, is hoe beginsel was vast, en hoe moeilik het was, as hy besluit geneem het, om het verander te kry, jy moes al jou inkies in een rij gehad, het jou nieuw, jy het jou nieuw all the facts, jy het jou het all jou daks in een rou, to convince him to do something else, or take another decision, but, I agree with the previous speakers. One thing I can honestly say, it was always to the benefit of the individual or the organization. And that was lekker om met iemand te werk, al was a besluit nie populair by mense nie, het jy geweet, dis tot voordeel van of vir individie of vir organisatie. En dit was baie lekker. Wat ongelooflik lekker was, was saam met om te toer, of saam met om by toernooie uit te hang, want een of ander tyd het jy geweet, hier kom een baie snaakse ding, of iets die kookie wat hy gaan sê, en jy gaan vir daar daar oorlag, so het was altyd vir my lekker, om so aan die achterkant van die Engelsmanse rug te staan, en te hoor wat sê, as iets gebeur, of ons lag daar oor, of ek kry van die WhatsApp, op een baie snaakse tyd, so daarvoor, kan ek net sê, baie dankie, dit was lekker. Dan was daar ook, die rechte harde kwas Engelsman, hy kon per tyme al rechtig sy staart, en een naad kry oor iets, en dan was hy harde kwas, tot jy om anders oortuig het, of totdat hy, uh, dit wat hy in sy hart het aan jou kon oordra en jou beweeg het om iets anders te doen. En dit is waardevol, want dit getuig van mense met hoe morele standaarde. En dan, 
laatste wil ik wil ik iets met jullie deel en ik denk dat som voor som schoon bij mooi op. Een baie bekende Amerikaanse auteur Maya Angelou beskryf hierdie as volg en ek lees dit graag vir julle. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. In die woorde denk ek som vir schoon 100% op. Dis nie altyd wat hy gesê het, of wat hy gedoen het, maar dis hoe hy een individie laat voel het. Amal was vir hom belangrijk, en amal het getel. En daarvoor kan ons sê, baie, baie dankie. En dankie vir die voorraag, laat ons vir die kortheid ons leven met hom kon deel. Uh, ons sien jou aan die ander kant, Engelsman, baie dankie. Dankie Nico. Dankie Nico. Um, we call aan Erin Bester. I wrote a little something, but it doesn't even come close to what I'm showing and the Bartlett family is meant to be over the years. I don't know how to start this off. I couldn't imagine this day coming so soon. I'm Sean was more to me <laughs> than simply I'm Sean. Our parents met by chance. Matthew simply didn't bother to shed a few hundred grams at a tournament. And I'm Sean just went to my dad and stri- struck, uh, struck up a conversation. At the time, I never knew how crucial this moment would turn out to be. For that's the day I met my brother. I met my second family. And I met the father figure that I could look up to for years to come. I was oblivious to all of this. Our fathers grew to become amazingly good friends. With next to no one my dad trusted more. We spent years traveling South Africa, shouting and supporting each other to stick it out through the trying times, through the weight loss, tears, success, failures and stitches. Next to my dad, there's no one I'd rather have cheering me on from the sidelines. I've always truly felt part of the family and I still do today. From Stoutgat to Slapgat, from Kleinki to Siena, his love and support never faltered for even a second. I'm sure he's always believed in those he cared about, and I'm blessed and honored to have stood among those. It's about as far as I got, but there's still way more. I'm sure he stood in place when There was no one to travel with me to Germany. He took me under his wing, supported and recorded every match to send to my dad. At 14, my dad died and Matthew and Umshorn were there to comfort me. Umshorn then became the father figure that I would look up to up until now. From hunting, to Christmases, to New Year's. He's never not welcomed me in. The family he has raised is one I'll always look up to, one I'll always feel a part of, and one one that I'll strive to have as time goes by. I loved your dad so much, and I love you guys so much. <laughs> but the, <laughs> while I was away and I felt like giving up, I'm sure it's the one who'd call me once or twice a week <laughs> to make sure I'm right. <laughs> The 
I'll never forget all that you guys have done for me. <laughs> the character that Sean was. And the loving and father and supportive person that he's been to everyone around him. I love you guys eternally. And I'm sorry that we had a meet at this time. <laughs> Um, I get a paar goeders om te lees, uh, om Willem het vir my, uh, hulde blijk gegeen om te lees vir my pa, um, om Willem sê, ek moet net begin om verskoning te maak, dat ek nie self die hulde blijk lever nie. Ek is ongelukkig te veel van die emotionele mens, en het so net tra- tra- trane daal wie gewees het. Ek het baie vriende in Stoei, maar Sean was een van die mens, meest loyaalste vriende. Sean en Gassie is van my groot vriende, hulle is altyd welkom in my huis, en ek was altyd welkom by hulle. Ek is nie iemand wat datums onthou nie, en goed soos geschiedenis nie, so ek kan nie precies onthou van wanneer ek en Sean met mekaar bevriend gevraag het nie. Ons het vriendskap het echter teen een vinnige spoed gegroei. Ons kon oor enige t- iets praat en raad vra. Ons familie waardes is baie gesoort gelijk en ons het gemeenskapelike belangstelle gehad. Alwee was mal oor stoei en baie lief vir die wildtuin. Hy was natuurlijk in die meer bevoorrechte positie om gereeld wildtuin toe te gaan en net om te terg met prachtfoto's van vooral leipaarde terwyl ek in die kaap sit. <laughs> Wanneer ek kans krij het ek om ook gepeper met so paar foto's en ons gaan die einde van die maand galagari gala toe. En dit dit was altyd op uh, op my paas een bucket list gewees. Um, ek gaan met die Kalahari son ondergaan, een glasie klink op een merkwaardige pel. Een beter administrieve en hardwerkende persoon in Stoei het ek nog nooit ontmoet nie. Tussen Sean en Omani het hulle alles van Stoei geweet. Um, En die dag toe Omani die tuig neerle, het Sean nie geskroom om in, om in te spring om daar die afdeling ook te help nie. Um, toe Sean een paar jaar terug gekies is om die skuisrechtersraad te dien, was dit vir my wat een administrieve nachtmerrie was, a blessing in disguise. Hy het voor een paar maanden al die sk- skuisrechters ap, ap- aspekte uitgesorteer en ons raad kon soos een goed geoliede machine loop. Ek kon focus op opleiding en hy het gesorg dat die papierwerk en fraas versla in plek was. Hy was een rees aanwins vir die skuitsrechters in Zuid-Afrika. Sy temperamentier en interaksie met die mede beamtes wat altyd een toon, toonbeeld van respect. Ons gaan die leemte wat hy los nie makkelijk vul nie. Elke keer as ek in Afrika gaan optree het, het hy my gedreig, gedurg, moed <laughs> en gepraatskies. Ek het uh, lang klas Afrikaans gelees. Um, ingepraat en geluk gewens wanneer ek dit nodig gehad het. Verlede jaar met my pa sy afsterwe was hy vir my daar toe ek dit nodig gehad het. Toe die nood toe die noodloop sy gesin tref met sy pa sy afsterwe in december, het hy sterk 
gestaan en allemaal kon op hom staat maak. Hy kon hard speel, maar eers as daar klaar gewerk is. Ons het oor ver, verskye bottels wijn die landse probleme probeer oplos. Een van sy grootste leg, legacies was seker die ITMS systeem, wat hy help ontwikkel het. Ek was natuurlijk sy grootste nachtmerrie wat gereeld die systeem getoets het en as ek om gebel het oor iets op ITMS, was die eerste woorde altyd, wat het jy nou gebreek? En binnen minute het hy dit uitgesorteer. Ek glo ons sal nog lang in die toekomst die stelsel gebruik en elke keer as ons dit gebruik, sal Sean in ons gedagtes wees. Iemand het nooit geklaar het nie en altyd met glimlach rond, rondloop sal die persoon wees wat ek onthou. Een persoon wat altyd sy gesin eerste gestel het en ook in hul suksesse gefloreer het. Kassie wat presteer het by Sassel, Shani wat al recht, rechtsgraad ontvang het en Matthew wat plek gekry het in Amerika was van die hoogste punte wat hy trots met gedeel het. Ek en die meeste van die stoei wereld, as ook MDS, het een van die grootste ges- geeste verloor, maar sy nalaat en skap sal bly voort- voortleef in ons gedagtes en dade. Kasi, Shani, Matthew, jylle het die hero van een man en een pa gehad, wat ons sal sien voortleef in jylle. Wees sterk en moet nie skroom om op ons nommer te druk nie. Sean, ris en vrede, my vriend. Willem, geloem jy. En dan, my, uh, my opa het een gedig geskryf vir my pa. Um, daar kom altyd die tyd van hartseer. Dit is een gevoel wat jy nie kan beheer. En ook mooie herringere, herringeringe, wat nog lang sal voort bestaan. Maar ja, tye kom en tye gaan. Sean was een skoon sien wat ouwers net van kon droom. Een mens wat jy klassificeer as room. Kort kort het ek myself geklap om uit te vind of, ek, of is ek wakker en lewe. Sean, ek sal jou mis tot ek oud is en ook nie meer wewe nie. Pa Erik. My opa sê ook, uh, Sean is too, is too late to say the things we would have loved to say to you. So instead, it will be said in memory of you. When I think of you, there's, there's, these are the words that come to mind. Care. The care you had for your family. I always admire how much you loved your family. Despite the vast amount of love and care you had for your family, you somehow still had abundant left for all the people who crossed your path. The extended family, friends, the young people from the wrestling fraternity and your co-workers. Work. Your diligence, determination and with placed you in category of its own. I'm sure you will be sorely missed among your colleagues at MDS. Sport. You had a passion for sport, whether it was on the couch watching rugby and soccer on the TV, next to the wrestling mat supporting Matthew, or waiting next to the dam for Shawnee to swim a mile. You passionately cheered and celebrated both the good times and the character building moments. Later with your dis- dedicated involvement in wrestling combined with your vibrant personality, you excelled to the highest level of the sport. Leisure, or should I say, Kruger National Park. 
I think of myself as a quite knowledgeable man when it comes to fauna and, and flora. But here I have to admit, he piped me to the post. What? Lastly, your sense of humor won't be remembered and will live on through your children. You just had to make people around you laugh. Lastly, my son-in-law, I will end here and for, s for this I give you distinction. I could not have asked for a better husband for Gussie, nor a father to raise my grandchildren. It was a pleasure and honor to share your life. Um, and then, my pa's uh, best friend from um, from school date of uh, live along his friend uh, Craig Campbell. I I is not here. Uh, I is in Scotland. <laughs> I had something to write for my pa. Um, I say Sean and I grew up together and as adults we worked together. Sean was a natural leader. He would always be the one to find sol salutation, to talk it through and to make sure that everything was resolved. He had an unnecessary intuition and ability to read people and no matter how busy he was, he always had time to talk to you. A five-minute talk with Sean was always a tonic you needed when you were having a bad day. As he was never judgmental and usually knew what had to be done to make things better. The numerous online comments from his friends, colleagues and clients are testaments to the just how much Sean was loved. How much his opinion was respected and how many lies he touched in his time with us. Sean's greatest achievement, without a doubt, his family. His love for Gussie, Shawnee, and Maddie was obvious to anyone and everyone who knew Sean. The first time he in in introduced me to Gussie was at university in 1993. And he told me then already that he was going to spend the rest of his life with this with her. Although Sean's time with us has been halted permanently, Gussie, I know that he was happy to have spent the last 28 years with you. Sean often used to tell me how proud he was of Shawnee and Maddie. In our last chats this the week before he passed, Sean telling me how Shawnee had just written her bar exams and would be admitted in November. He said he was looking forward to her grad getting married and giving him a grandson, specifically in that order. <laughs> um, although Sean hadn't seen Maddie for 18 months, he told me he was looking forward to him. He told me he was looking forward to him coming home for a visit and for the common Commonwealth tryouts. His numerous achievements in the world of wrestling would make any dad proud. Sean was really happy to happy that Maddie was doing well in the US and hoped he would settle down there one day. Sean joked about Maddie's girlfriend father father being really strict and how that was uh, good for good for him. Sean, I'm really going to miss you. How do you say goodbye to someone who has been a part of your life for more than almost 35 years? How do you find the words to describe someone who was always the voice of reason and who could see no ill in others? How do you even start to accept that you will no longer be able to talk to someone who was just always there for you? You have left a void that will never be filled and the words is an emptier place without you. The world is an emptier place without you. 
You are my rock. You are my common sense. And you are my voice of reason. I know you will never... I know you will live on in your family. In all who knew and loved you. And everyone that touched... In you, and everyone you touched in your short life, and you will never, ever be forgotten. Rest in peace, my friend, Sean Campbell, Craig Campbell. <laughs> um, dear Dad. It's been 607 days since I last saw you. Some might say you've had a long life, and some might argue that it was too soon. I might agree. What I can say, though, is that the life you lived was a great one. <sighs> a year ago today, I had to give a assignment in about a eulogy for my speech class. Um, and I guess uh, we'll see if your money was worth where it was spent. I have no words to say that will make anyone smile. Me and you mostly had ups between us, but I know and uh, everyone else knows that I was a, a little shit once in a while. <laughs> Sometimes a big shit. But you raised me to be the man I am today. And all I can hope is that I can measure up to the great things you have achieved. You fell in love with a boorfro. You had my sister and you loved both of them so much that you gave what is now known as MDS, your heart and soul. Then obviously, I hope you loved me as much as I loved you. I wish you could still be here to see your daughter be married, to see your grandchildren grow up. Then I wish you could have seen me maybe get married. Most of all, I wish I could see you. I could see. I w wish you could see me wrestle one more time. The preferred location on the Olympic mat. finally achieving my dream but I guess I'll never have you threatening to withdraw me from the games after all <laughs> look I love you and I know a lot of people loved you I'll finish this with a little something you would say life is not fair my boy and it probably never will be but put your big girl panties on and go do the hard work. Daddy, I love you. And I know I'm not going to be able to kiss your forehead, sweaty, sweaty forehead, ever again. But I have you in my memory, always. Yeah, there's not much more to say. Shani. Sorry, we got a lot of messages from MDS, so I needed a pa big paper clip for them all. <laughs> um, 
I just want to read out a few messages that we got from MDS before I, gosh, I don't want to call it a eulogy, <laughs> before I give my eulogy. Uh, the first message is from the Durban branch. It is with great sadness that I write this letter today. Sean was one of the smartest, most hardworking and dedicated CEOs. that I have come across. All of us were shocked and saddened to hear about his sad demise. Sean's presence will be greatly missed in our organization. I haven't known Sean since the day I was employed at MDS. He taught me so much over the years and I will forever be grateful for Sean. He will be with us in spirit and we will ensure that we uphold his legacy at MDS. I hope you guys don't mind listening to my my snotty nose. <laughs> From Port Elizabeth. Words that reverberated by most in Port Elizabeth officers when thinking of Sean was that he was kind-hearted, humble, and a fair man who had a great sense of humor. And most of all, a family-orientated man. He admired the admiration and the respect that shone through from each individual spoke volumes. You were a true leader who taught us to understand more, motivated us to be more, and inspired us to become more. Your leadership made others better as a result of your presence, and that impact will last in your absence. You are, miss you are missed dearly. May your soul rest in peace. And then they wrote here, Global for life. <laughs> I think I can say that's not true. <laughs> From the Cape Town branch, we are still very shocked and extremely heartbroken to hear that we have lost you. Even though we hardly saw you here in Cape Town, we most certainly felt your presence every day throughout our warehouse. And this was just because of the amazing passion you had for us as your staff and the passion you had for MDS. Every single day, the staff here in Cape Town strived and were driven to impress you and to get your approval in the way Cape Town handled the business. And not only was it to do a good job, it was to share the same pride that you had in customer satisfaction and to make MDS the best. Your leadership and ambition for MDS is the foundation that has been laid ahead, of, ahead for all of us to continue this path to make an amazing company even more amazing. And we thank you for letting all of your amazing qualities overflow from you down into each and every one of us. The way you cared for all of us as your staff is like nothing we have ever felt and experienced before. The world we once knew is now no more. Sean, we will continue to live your legacy. We will continue to work as though you are still in the driver's seat, steering us to be a great company that you had always aspired us to be. We will forever remember you. Remember your bubbling personality and contagious sense of humor. We will forever remember your passion and we will forever miss you. We love you and we thank you for the time of you that was borrowed to us. We consider ourselves very fortunate and best blessed to have known you and to have worked with you. May your soul rest in peace, big boss, until we meet again. From Bloemfontein, I'm so glad there's one Afrikaans message in the bunch. <laughs> I will try my best, Afrikaans was never my good strong point, Dad used to say, Ons airtime, hardloop uit. <laughs> Beste Sean, eerstens wil ons vir jou graag bedank vir die geleentheid wat jy vir elkeen van ons geskep het om deel van die MDS-familie te word. Dankie dat jy een leier was vir ons in een moeilike tyd en dat jy ons daardoor kon inspireer. Dit sal vir ons altyd bijblij en ons sal dit gebruik om jou droom voor te laat bestaan sal jou altyd onthou vir jou grappies en rustigheid. MDS Bloemfontein. Someone need to read this. 
from the Pretoria branch. Sean was living proof of how fine a person can be. He was a good boss to the people in his charge, a loving husband to his wife and a devoted father to his children. He was also a good friend to many of us and a great colleague. The character of the life that he lived might be summed up in a few words. He was sincere, he was earnest, and he was loyal. He was a good friend who cared so deeply and dearly. We feel so honored to have known him and learned from him. We cherish all the good memories of Sean. <laughs> a leader is admired. A boss is feared. Farewell to a true leader. We miss you. Gussie, Matthew, and Shawnee, always remember, those we love never truly leave us. There are things that death cannot touch. From Nell Spread, what I would like to say is that I only knew him for around about a year. And in that year, there was a few times where we could put work aside and actually get to know each other. Never in my life had I met a leader that tried to be so involved with his staff. No matter what leg of the business you functioned in, it became clear to me that he was not only a great business leader, but also a valued friend and father. Then from CSD, May your soul rest at ease, knowing that we are keeping the business running smoothly and all is well in the office, just missing our main link, you. Mr. B was such a wonderful person to work for. Everyone in the office will miss his ready smile and helpful attitude around the department. He was always giving compliments or helping hand to his staff. He made sure we knew that we were appreciated and wouldn't allow customers to ill-treat his staff. And for that, we are truly going to miss him. CSD department will forever miss you. From Uncle Timba, Sean, my friend, my boss, you gone too soon. Sorry for all the times I may have unknowingly hurt your feelings and caused you pain. Goodbye, Obut, until we meet again. I never knew saying just one word could make me feel so blue until I said goodbye to a special friend like you. From Nkhantla. I left this one for almost last because I feel the same. I am what I am because of Sean Bartlett. I am where I am because of him. I thank Sean for believing in me during the difficult time I faced when I started in visas in 2007. When I was about to give up, I asked him to put me back on the road as I was a driver before then. He said to me, I know that you can do it. Now go sit down and work. these words still ring in my ears as he had no doubt in my capability he never said I think you can do it he always said I know you can if I had enough time I would mention a lot about my work experience with a good man deeply missed Norklantla and then <laughs> I would like to read the message from East London last It just made me smile <laughs> when I received it. On Tuesday, the 6th of April, at 39 minutes past four, a message came through to the MDS family saying, Afternoon all, it is with huge regret that I have to inform you that our leader, commander in chief passed away a few minutes ago. A message that so shocked us all and took a few minutes to sink in. 
with a blink of an eye, life as we know it changed. How can I put into words the tremendous loss and pain that we all feel? Sean Bartlett, the gentle giant, family man, businessman, father, husband, son, uncle, friend, lovely, caring, passionate, driven, devoted leader, respected man, and the list can go on. But to me, Sean Bartlett was Casper, after Casper the Fries, a name I gave him as soon soon after working at MDS. I will never forget my very first phone call with you in 2016. Delon on the phone and Sean in the background. I was so adamant that I was going to work for MDS that for the first few months I was working without getting paid. <laughs> after f that very first phone call, a relationship grew. One that often had Delon on the phone and Sean chirping in the background. Charlene, what did you do now? I, Charlene, <laughs> Sean would chirp. Every la even our last phone call, this one was a bit different. Sean on the phone and Delon chirping in the background. This was actually a cock out session over a high sushi bill that was never lived down. Lived down. As, a m <laughs> as the man that Sean was, this cock out session turned into a 10 minute call chirping each other and laughing. We would, who would have ever imagined that that would be a last phone call? From all of us at the East London branch, we would like to take this time to say thank you. Thank you for being an incredible leader. It was an honor to have worked with you and to be led by such an inspirational man. You will forever be missed. Rest in peace, big boss. We love you. Um, Mom would like me to thank a few people before I say the last few words. I always need to have the last few words. He also did. It was fun growing up in that household. <laughs> Firstly, to Delon, the MDS family and supergroup, thank you so much. Delon, you were there from the moment this nightmare started. And you held our hand throughout the whole thing. And thank you so much to each and every one of you for all the things that you are doing for us. And you have done for us. Dad loved you all so much. <sighs> to Mandy P for the food last week. We are still eating it. I think mom is very grateful that we don't have to really cook anything. To Uncle Hugh and Christine, thank you for being here today. And thank you for all that you are doing for us. Dad really loved you guys so much. To Katie and the staff here at the barn, thank you so much for the help in organizing this. I'm funny. Mama says so big hugs. My boy, boy, donkey. Then she says, we can't see for us to get a little bit of 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 Nicole and Tani Debs. Boy, donkey. Very prachtige tafel. I don't know where you sit. My boy, boy, donkey. It's prachtig and he said it so hard. Coach Niku. Boy, thank you, Coach, that you found so many reelings to have and so short kennis giving. To all of Dad's family and friends for making time to come out today, and all of the messages and love and support and the flowers that we've received. So many flowers. Thank you so much. For Opa, ons fixie pixie. Boy, thank you that you are here. Boy, thank you that you so very good for us to have a market in the ice. 
boy, boy, donkey. You're done. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Jordan, thank you for... The moment I was so grateful that you stayed and held our hand. And thank you so much for all the support that you've been giving us. Thank you. I don't think I... If I missed anyone, thank you. <laughs> I can't. We made the list and then, I don't know. I think maybe more people have helped, but thank you so much to everyone who helped. <sighs> thank you, Alcina, for the shot of tequila. <laughs> I think it is helping. <laughs> oh, gosh. I could stand here and I could tell you all how much that man meant to me. But I don't think there are words to describe losing your gravity. So instead, I wrote this, I think on Monday, when I was sitting and everything was just too quiet. And I just thought of this and I thought that's what he would want. Dad and I always had a very weird relationship <laughs> for father and daughter to have. He was more than just my dad. He was my teacher my role model, my savior, and my best friend. There was never anything that we didn't discuss with each other. Over the past week and today, I've heard from so many people about what dad meant to them. A friend, a confidant, a mentor, a boss, a leader, a co-worker, a prankster, a second dad, and sometimes just a comedian of note. <laughs> dad and I had many discussions over the years, and a lot of them were actually And a lot of them were actually less about the two of us and more about what mattered more to him, all of you. So instead of telling you all what daddy meant to me and what an amazing person he was, I think he'd like me to talk to you about what you all meant to him. Maddie, a few weeks ago, Dad and I were actually talking about you and how much he missed you and how much I missed you. Daddy was immensely proud of you. He was so proud of how much you've grown as a person and how much he knew you would still grow and how much he knew was still to come. He was so excited to see all that you have done and all that you will do. Maddie, don't forget that he had faith in you, in your future, and that he would be proud of you, not because you succeed, but because you tried. Ernst, Dad and I had long, long discussions about you, Clanky. He loved you so, so very much. And he worried about you, as I do. I think as all of, we, all of us really do sometimes. But he knew that you would come out on top. He knew that with your brilliant mind and the strength that we both knew you had, 
you would overcome and persevere. Mommy, I don't know if you know this, but Daddy and I skin it about you a lot. <laughs> he loved you with everything he had. A few years ago, I told him that one day, I wish that I can find a love as great as yours. And he told me, that's the easy part. <laughs> the hard part is making sure you keep it. You have to work every day to keep it, he said. You have to make sure you love the person as much as you did the day you married them. I know that he was an incredibly stubborn man. Hardkoppig. <laughs> But I saw how he loved you every day. And I saw that he loved you more and more every day. <sighs> Jordan Campbell James Mitchell. Don't think that you were excluded from our Skinner sessions. Dad joked with me once that he just might prefer you a little bit more than me. Not by much, but just a bit, because you always made him coffee. Terribly bad coffee, <laughs> but still coffee. I know that he never really said this to you, but he loved you. And I know this because he told me he already considered you family. To our greater wrestling family. God, the man loved you guys. <laughs> he loved the sport and he loved the people. He took such pride in telling me about how much he's learned from some of you. And how many plans he's had with you. Yes, he learned things from you. <laughs> I know a lot of people think we just learned things from him that he learned one or two things from you. I know that we will continue to work on those plans and grow our sport together with his memory firmly in our hearts and minds. To MDS, Supergroup and all his family there. I don't really think I have words that can describe how much he loved you guys and the company or how incredibly proud he was of the growth that you guys have achieved together. I think from the messages that I've read from MDS, it's really clear that he considered each employee to be family, not just an employee, but a family member. I know that you will all continue to honor his work and dedication in continuing to build MDS. And I know that he will be with you all every step of the way. Dad was so many things to so many people. I was telling Craig the other day how shocked I am of the outpouring of love from across the world. I don't think any of us realize just how much he was loved by how many people from far and wide. <laughs> Just know that he loved you too. He may have hated a crowd, <laughs> but he loved people. He loved his people. And we were all his people. Thank you. Thank you, um, Shani, sharing us all those details. It's give us a, a broad idea of the legacy of, of Sean Bartlett. Um, we all, uh, we from on behalf of the family, we say thank you to each and everyone who have been here, made the effort to come here. Thank you for uh, all your contributions 
in this family and your contribution to the wrestling community as well. Sh um, would you like to say so is there anything else? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think it was enough. It's honest to what uns will say anymore. Uh, the those cosmos got poor boy and the uh, barn. Um, those work drunk was got poor. So, uh, my parcel, I think my parcel had to get a whiskey or pom of each drink. Um, yeah, thank you that I'm going to come for dag en and I'm going was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then our proceedings are concluded in this area. Uh, please uh, follow the, the, the rest. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.